Hello grandchildren, uh, I am currently in Australia. Nah, so that's a thing that's new in my life. I wasn't able to post a journal entry last week because I was living in a hostel and it was very stressful and there was a lot of things going on. So if you don't know, uh, a hostel is kind of like a motel, except instead of getting one room that you stay in, uh, you share a room with a bunch of other people. And it's a lot cheaper than staying in a motel and I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money, uh, you know, paying for a motel every single night until I found an apartment. So the idea was until I found an apartment, I was just going to stay in a hostel or a few hostels and uh, live with a ton of other people until I found a place to live. As you can see, I do have a place to live in now, but for the past week while I was looking for a place to live, I've been staying in a hostel. I got to the Sydney airport. Uh, first thing I did when I got here was I went to uh, a Vodafone teller, which is like, I had Verizon wireless before when I was in the United States, and Verizon isn't a thing in Australia. And uh, so I, I mean, my phone didn't work. And also my card, my, uh, my credit card and my debit card were both shut off. Well, I think when I was in New Zealand, I did come to Australia with a couple hundred dollars in cash. So I did have money and I just had to transfer my money over from the United States dollar into Australian money, which looks like this. So this is a normal American $20 bill right here. And then this is a normal Australian $20 bill. Uh, and John Flynn is on the front of this. I have no idea who John Flynn is. Anyway, I got money and then I got um, a month of Vodafone service. So uh, that's what I'm using now. And I have uh, an Australian phone number in my phone. I, I arrived in Australia with no idea what I was doing. That was the plan from the beginning and it worked. Carried two luggage bags, my backpack and my laptop bag uh, out at the airport uh, and I started walking down the, the streets of Sydney and I eventually came across a guy that had a van that apparently he's, he's he, I don't know if it was like an, a, an official thing or if it was just a dude to the van, but he had a service where you could pay him to take you places. It was like a taxi, but sketchier. Uh, and I told him I wanted to go to uh, a hostel somewhere in Sydney. He started driving and he, uh, I, I looked up a bunch of hostels on Google Maps before I came here just to kind of get an idea of how much everything costed, but I didn't see this hostel on Google Maps at first, but the guy just dropped me off in a weird alleyway behind a building and I walked around the building and there was the entrance to a hostel called Nate's Place. And I figured, I mean, I didn't know anything about this hostel because I didn't see it on the internet anywhere and I didn't know how much it costed, but I decided to, to walk walk up the stairs. Uh, it's a very long staircase to get up to the front desk, but eventually got up to the top and asked him how much it costed. It was a very reasonable price. It was like $30 a night or something, but if you sp stayed for like a week, I think it was like 200. Australian d dollars convert like down to United States dollars. So that was that was $200 uh, in Australian money would probably be like 170 or something uh, United States money. So I figured that was a really good deal for for staying there for a week and I immediately, without even looking uh, at the hostel at all, I paid for a week and, uh, and then I stayed there for a week. And it was really interesting because, uh, I mean, before I left, there was a lot of family members that were kind of iffy on whether or not it was a good idea to stay in a hostel. And a lot of my family was thinking that it'd be really dangerous. But then again, a lot of my family didn't have any experience with hostels. And I had been talking to a ton of people who actually had been to hostels or knew people who had been to hostels. Like uh, my friend Logan's dad had been in a hostel before. Uh, and then a few, like a, a couple of people from work had been in hostels hostels before. So like from all the people who had actually been to hostels, it seemed like everyone agreed unanimously that it would be a really good idea and you get to meet a lot of people. So that's what I did. It was completely awesome. It, there was no real negatives to staying in the hostel. I didn't feel in danger at all. I actually felt completely safe. The room is like 10 people. So there's five bunk beds in this room and uh, everyone just kind of claims a bunk and you stay there. And a lot of people who had been like in the room and who lived in this hostel, 
had stayed for like a couple months. So there was a lot of like regulars and it felt more like a college dorm than it did uh, what I heard about hostels, especially this one. I don't know what other hostels were like, but this hostel, it was all people like 20 to 30 years old and it definitely had the the sort of personality uh, that a college dorm would have. Pretty much every day after I moved into the hostel, my only job was to go on the internet and try to find apartments and places to live and stuff. And I walked around and I checked out a bunch of places and I eventually settled on this place. Uh, this kind of a, it's a nice room that was one of the cheaper ones that I could find, but I get my own room so I don't have to live with anyone and there was actually more expensive places to live where it'd be sharing a room with other people. This place is a little bit far out from Sydney. It's like right on the it's like on the outer rim of Sydney. So I have to take a train every single day to go to school, but even the cost of the train is a couple bucks a ride. Um, it still adds up with the cost per month um, with the room and then train fare back and forth costs less than a lot of places in like the middle of Sydney would. And the train's kind of cool and it only takes like 20 or 30 minutes to get into Sydney. So I feel like I kind of lucked out finding this place. I actually moved in two nights ago and and I spent all of yesterday just kind of setting up the room. I kind of hung up some pictures and Star Wars poster and all that stuff. And I have been just kind of sorting my life out. So that's cool. The, the hostel was nice, but it felt really, really stressful and kind of, I, I don't know, there's just so many people and I mean, it probably would have been the same thing if I lived in a college dorm. There was a lot of people and there, there was like, some of them were kind of clicky. So I didn't really, want to, I, I don't know, they just didn't seem like my type of people, I guess. There's a few people in the hostel that were awesome, and also the drinking age in Australia is 18, not 21. So the other day, I had my first legal drink at an actual bar, and they ID'd me and everything, and that, so that was interesting. There was actually, I, I wasn't even planning on doing that at all. I knew the drinking age was 18, but I wasn't planning on going out and drinking or anything, just because that's not really my thing, but uh, there is these two guys, Joe and Jody, and then also this uh, this other guy named Gary that uh, they were all in my uh, in my room at the hostel. And we, I had been talking to them a little bit on and off for a couple of days. And then one night they asked me if I wanted to go to a rock bar, like, like a bar with rock music and stuff. And I was just laying there in my bed and I figured it'd be more exciting to do that than to just sit in my bed and look at apartments for another couple hours. So I went with them, but they were like the most British people I've ever met in my life. Like not not like Daniel Radcliffe British. They were like intense pub British. That was about about ten. twenty minutes later, this guy who must have been like eighteen or something on his own, he came up and he was like, "Guys, have you seen my tent anywhere?" We went, "Did it have a couple of aerosol cans in there?" He said, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. No, we've not seen it anywhere. I've not seen that one, mate. <laughs> no, no, no. It's smoldering it in front of us. Everything. Yeah, and actually, that was a weird thing about the hostel is that there wasn't that many Australian. I, like, I haven't met a lot of Australian people yet living in that hostel because most of the people in the hostel are actually like European. And uh, yeah, I mean, there, there was a couple of people like there was a Brazilian guy, there was an Egyptian guy, there was a Russian girl, but uh, a lot of them were from like I mean, I believe Joe and Jody were from London. And uh, a lot of them were just from like different, like the, kind of the UK in that area. And there was uh, a couple Canadians. I'm pretty sure I was the only American there. So yeah, I went out drinking with uh, Joe, Jody and Gary, and then we lost Gary and Jody. I don't know what happened to them. Apparently, I think Jody said something about he needed to take a piss over down some alleyway and then I was walking with Joe and then we turned around and they were just both gone and we didn't see them for the rest of the night. They made it back to the room eventually, but uh, yeah, it was just Joe and I talking. And Joe showed me what a Jaeger bomb is and I had one of those and it was all right. I've also tried a Bloody Mary, which is awful. And yeah, it should never have been invented because it tastes just uh, it's the most, one of the most disgusting drinks I've ever had in my life. Yeah, so now I'm in Sydney and I've been walking around Sydney for the past week and exploring everything and it's, it's really cool. There's a lot of, uh, there's just a lot of interesting things going around. It's definitely more big city, I think, than what I'd like to get out of Australia and definitely while I'm here at some point, I want to go and actually see the outback and meet some like intense 
actual Australian people rather than like city Sydney Australian people but uh, Sydney is still really cool and I've lived in Reading for most of my life which is definitely not a city and right now me living in Sydney is actually it feels more like I'm just living in a city than me living in Australia I mean there is definitely a disconnect with everyone back at home with the time zone differences and stuff because it's like 17 hours uh, different between here and then California. Even with that though, it's actually, it doesn't feel a whole lot different from the United States and Sydney, but I think it's just, that's because it's a really big city. Uh, there's uh, the biggest struggle I think is that there's the stores aren't the same and I had no idea where even to buy food when I first got here. But I've, I've started to learn more about Sydney and I have uh, slowly learned more about how to use the train system and the bus system. I tried it, the first time I tried using the trains, uh, it took me like two and a half to three hours to actually get to where I needed to go and it should take like 20 or 30 minutes because I, I didn't really understand what was happening. I got on the wrong train and I went the exact opposite direction from where I needed to go for about like 40 minutes and then I literally got off of the train confused to try to find a map and then a police officer stopped me, asked me where I was going and I told him I was trying where I was trying to go to and he just laughed and told me that I wasn't even close and that I should get back on a train. <laughs> but yeah, I'm slowly adjusting to life in Sydney, Australia, and I am uh, g keep you updated on what everything is like because there's still a lot of stress and learning happening very, very quickly as I'm adjusting. I think that's good for this one, though. Uh, grandchildren, if you see me in time in the near future, we oh wow, uh, we should we should go. Mm, mm, mm. I. We should take a we should take a selfie together uh, with all you like me and all of my grandchildren or whichever one of you if I have multiple grandchildren are with me at the time you should come over we should take a selfie and uh, yeah that's it if the cell phones exist in 50 years or whatever when you guys are alive uh, and they have a selfie mode or if there's a camera that we can use to take a selfie mode or if there's just a weird camera drones that fly around you push a button and it flies over and takes a picture for you whatever the situation is maybe there's not even pictures maybe it's uh, technology is so good that we have more of like a Harry Potter thing going on where they take kind of like these little looped videos of the essence of what's happening and it's like all 3d whatever whatever it is whatever the technology is uh, for selfies in the future we should use that technology and take a photo or the media capture of what uh, we look like right then and I'm probably gonna be really old and wrinkly and you guys can laugh at me for being old and wrinkly and then I'll be a laugh with you and then be inside a little bit sad because I'm so old and wrinkly but I'm not gonna show it on the outside I'll just kind of laugh with you guys and hide my pain that sounds like a plan grandchildren I'll see you guys in the next entry